you ready to just jump right in? Sure. Yep. All right. Just do the share screen should be on the bottom of your screen somewhere. So everyone can see that? Yep. Hopefully it loads. Okay. So uh, for my thesis, I decided to take on a project that would focus on the areas of how we use social media to create collaborative learning environments and specifically taking a look at graphic arts environments. Um, a little bit for the project background. Um, I started when I was in middle school and high school, I didn't know what I wanted to really pursue as far as a degree. And I honestly settled on communications because I like to create videos with my friends. Um, and I wanted to learn more about it. So with my time at SUNY as an undergraduate with CID, all the way up to this point, I've learned so many different skills and techniques that have allowed me to expand myself as a designer. And one thing that I really have taken away from it is the idea of working collaboratively with um, other students. And graphic design and collaborative learning work hand in hand together um, when it comes to working on specific projects. Uh, whether you be a painter, graphic artist, web designer, um, you go to somebody else for initial feedback, for constructive criticism, anything like that to make sure that you make the perfect piece or to make sure that you, the point you're trying to get across gets across. Um, but this kind of um, collaborative learning environment doesn't have to strictly be labeled to a classroom setting. Um, I, as well as others, can probably agree that if I was using a new Adobe product or was learning a new technique about logo designs or branding and I didn't have an instructor to help me, I was asking Google. And sometimes Google doesn't always turn out the best results for you. Sometimes you just get stuck. Um, so the project idea to come up with was to create some sort of a digital social space where designers of any levels can interact and collaborate without being set in that classroom environment. So my research topics and questions in, have included when I was going forward my literature review. Um, what is collaborative learning? How do we use social media for collaborative learning? And how is collaborative learning used in graphic arts? Um, so when it comes to collaborative learning, it's defined as um, an educational method used in teaching environments where groups of at least two or more people come together to look at a problem, solve an issue, evaluate each other's work and come up with a simple result or a product and just go off of each other's ideas and come, come up with a, a beautiful display. Um, so when it comes to um, examining the social media aspect of collaborative learning, um, my research and my readings have found that um, collaborative learning with the assistance of social media sites, Facebook, you know, or even email, because email is a collaborative source, it encourages learning and it encourages the expanding of knowledge and knowledge sharing among students um, and almost real life circumstances. And what I mean by real life circumstances is a classroom has the effect of instructor to student and chalk to chalkboard or marker to whiteboard where, excuse me, social media is a, a, in a real life atmosphere. Everyone uses it and now this day and age, everyone does something with some type of social media. So it kind of gives that real life effect. Um, let's see. So that being all said, looking at collaborative learning and graphic arts, it's a tool that is essential when it comes to being a graphic, a graphic artist. Um, graphic artists thrive on the feedback that they get from their colleagues in order to learn and expand and grow. Um, artists, like I said, they rely on this feedback and collaborations can be peer to peer, um, instructor to student, colleague to colleague, or even friend to friend. Because sometimes asking a friend is just as, asking a friend of their simple opinion is just as useful and resourceful as asking a, a colleague who might have a little bit more knowledge about what you're doing. Still resourceful. Um, 
this was a quote that I recently heard by, from Douglas Rushkoff in a TED talk about present shock. And he discusses early about the digital society and technology and how we've kind of adapted to it. Um, and he references using a computer for the very first time and he went to save a file and he had the option for read only and read write. And he didn't really understand that, but then he started looking at the world as an aspect of read only. At the time it was television was read only, money read only, um, religious scriptures read only. And that's kind of what he examined the world. And he made a statement that we live in a read write universe. And I think that relates very well when it comes to collaborative learning. Um, it, we as designers want to present our work and take that criticism and take that feedback so people can comment and write and we can send you know drafts where people can physically edit them or just verbally edit them for us so we can know what we're doing before we send them off um, when this happens in this read write universe your peers also become your teachers so based off of the literature review I gained the new sort of perspective at the affordance that social media has when it comes to collaborative learning and how important it is to maybe incorporate both into graphic arts education. Um, so for my project concept, I decided to design a mock-up of an app and this app has, uh, excuse me, creates a social media platform environment and it's intended for graphic artists of all skill levels from early beginners to professional. And it's made to be easy to use. So without further ado, I introduce to you feedback. And the application benefits are in the name itself. Like, I, like I've been saying this whole time, graphic designers and graphic artists rely so much on that feedback. And this will create that sort of environment, that freelance environment of not a classroom but you're still learning from each other and you're learning from either your peers or you're learning from strangers and you, then you that's how you form and make connections in this kind of um in, in a graphic arts environment um before i move forward with the app some design principles that can be seen throughout the app that i wanted to share um are i use um the aesthetic usability effect um which says that aesthetically pleasing designs are perceived as easier to use than less aesthetic designs um, as basically so if it looks clean it looks easy to use and from this app i tried to keep it very easy going with the blues and the whites so the colors and the values and the values are a light and dark shade um, that connect well with each other and so create a positive visibility and also you'll see throughout the app, my use of the circles, I will call them spheres, um, as well as some cube effects to keep that kind of shape consistency as well. Um, so with my first slide is on your left hand side, you will see it as feedback as an application on your screen where it would be. So if you click that and then on the right will be your initial opening to that application. The name pops up as well as the a logo. Um, once that kind of loads through, your options will come up to log in or sign up. And with that, you know, you log in as a uh, returning user or sign up as a new. So if you sign up as a new, you can add a photo, create a username and a password, and then sign up. From there, you will be asked to select your topic of interest. Um, I used a grid system here because I felt like it was clean. And those um, six areas of graphic arts are areas that I have focused on in my undergrad and graduate um, program. So realistically, it would not be limited to only those six and it would continue to scroll so you can make selections. And on the right hand side, it's the selection made of photography. So as you can see the difference here, it highlights in blue, the camera changes to a white color, and the done symbol also lights up to show that you have made at least one sort of selection. So once you have signed up, you are now in your um, personal newsfeed, 
And through here, you can see the iconic representation. You know, they have different names. You can name your spheres whatever you would like to. So you have a um, photo frenzy, GoPro media, what's a web, how does one Adobe, design principles, and based off of the icons represents that if you don't understand, you know, what's a web, there's a computer there to kind of go along with um, what the sphere, um, excuse me, holds. Um, down here in the bottom right, there is an add button. So if you click that button, it would bring you to a create public sphere option or a create private sphere option. So if you go forward with that, the difference here is the access code. So if we're looking at creating the public sphere, you can add a sphere image, which can be any image that would open up from your personal photo library that you've taken, screenshot, downloaded, or the app would allow for a generic use of a icon of an icon such as a camera or a video camera um, you enter your spheres name you enter your sphere description and then in the bottom right you can add people that maybe use the app um, that you have mutual contacts with so that would kind of do like a self-recognition within the device type thing um, on the right hand side is the private sphere and the private sphere has an access code which to me sends us um, sends kind of a vibe of a defensible space, and that's a space that is ter um, has territorial markers, um, opportunities for surveillance, and clear indications of activity, activity and ownership. Um, so I'm thinking of the activity and ownership portion of this, where a person can create this sphere and it's their own because they have their own access code and can distribute it how they would like to. If you don't have that access code, you don't get in. And again, you can add people in the bottom right here. So let's say that um, you would like to create a public sphere, and I did, and I named it Lego My Logo. Just kind of a playful name. You can name your um, spheres anything that you like. So in the top left, another add button, and here it was drops down to add content. You can add link, photo, video. Um, for myself, I decided to do a video, or excuse me, a photo, and here we have my, my logo design, and I type, hey guys, this is my new logo design, what do you think? To which Shelby could um, answer me saying, this is so cool, how did you make such a nice line? And to which I can respond, I made it in Adobe Illustrator, I used the live trace tool, and then a discussion and a conversation can be based off that, and I can teach Shelby something, and in the long run, she might be able to teach me something as well. Um, Let's talk about entering a public sphere that's already been created. So the public sphere is like, um, back on a feedback um, news feed. Um, let's look at how does one Adobe. So Mike here can say, anybody know which Adobe product to use when to create a logo? Looking for any preferences, to which Tyler could say, use Adobe Illustrator. So how does one contribute themselves to this type of conversation? Like any text message box, you click the send message but, um, button, your keyboard pops up, you type your response, to which I said, yes, Adobe Illustrator, best choice, great for logo designs. What's your logo idea? And then Mike answers, creating a logo for a sneaker company. So it's kind of a discussion and then it could go forward from there, you know, cool. And then from there, maybe I can throw in a question about Adobe how to use the magic wand tool in Photoshop, and then from there other users can answer. Um, so a little look at the personal um, feed um, to look at like a personal profile aspect. Again, I added, um, we're back at the news feed section, and throughout the presentation so far, I've had a generic symbol as to where a person's profile picture may be. So I added my own, and if you click on it, it will go to yours. You have your name, your age, your where you're from, and your your gallery, which would hold every piece that you've created um, and shared in any sphere, private or public. Um, your general interests, based off the iconic representation, and the connections that you may have made so far. Which other people, if they view your profile, they can see your mutual connections, and maybe they'll want to connect with you as well. Um, I didn't really focus on this aspect, but just kind of a possibility of maybe what it could look like on a computer screen as well. 
I wanted to show that it can be modified to go to a from mobile to desktop just to kind of give it that kind of aspect. Um, yeah, so that is my project idea. Thanks, Shannon. Sorry, I thought I was on mute. Oh, yeah, thanks so much. That, yeah, um, the, you know, I've taken a look at this, through, you know, through a lot of different iterations. And what I really love about it is the way it leverages. Uh, sort of, so I love this idea of the spheres and, and coming out in sort of your theory as well. Um, th this idea of, you know, sort of almost like a Habermasian idea of like, of, of what, what it should be, you know, sort of sitting around in a town square talking, but these are, are focused groups. And so I, I, I love this concept of sphere and private and public. So um, I don't know if others want to jump in and, and talk about different things, but if, if anything, I, I, I definitely want to hear a little bit more. Uh, um, you, you just sort of expand on that a little bit. You know, I was only going to add that this is really something in a sense that Jill Locascio, I think it was Locascio is how you pronounce it, could, could hear about because she's looking for ways to interact with her community, which in her case are veterans. And we've been sort of struggling with that concept of how do you make that happen? And maybe this concept of social media has come up before and maybe there's something uh, there. Uh, I think that was Shannon McCall last night. Um, oh, okay. Veterans, right? And um, that's right. The yeah. veterans. It was the other Shannon. So um, <laughs> the other Shannon. The other, another Shannon, I should say. Um, right, there must be a connection. There. Yeah, and what I, you know, and I kind of picking up what Ryan was saying. What I, I agree is, I, I, I think the you gave some interesting and serious thought to how people interact online, um, and that's, you know, and it's not like we've. We've been doing this for a long time now. We actually have some data and some understanding and there's some like pretty rich research that's been done and it's really, it's good that, and you know, I was really happy to see you pick up some vocabulary from that because that's, that's, you know, that's like the process of scholarship, you know, <laughs> you take other people's words and kind of give some new meaning to them. So that was very cool. Thank you. One thing that I, I kind of didn't touch on and I kind of meant to was, when looking at the idea of a private sphere, um, it can also be used to take the classroom setting out of a classroom. Um, I found, you know, we use Blackboard, but Blackboard, you know, if there's a discussion forum, you know, it's an assignment where the collaboration and discussion is kind of forced, where an outside application or a social sphere like this, it can be general and it can flow a lot easier. Um, so the private sphere would be a way for maybe an instructor to go through and create that sphere based off of its class and give that access code to their students. So, you know, maybe before they hand their final projects in and they're looking for help or feedback from their peers, they can send their project ideas to that sphere and then they can respond and then they can feel comfortable enough to say and have that kind of settlement in themselves like, okay, this is good enough this is what I can present to my class. You know, I'm just going to throw in that the problem is getting it to work because I've done that in almost all of my classes. I set up a public bulletin board. It's there. And it does get used, particularly when students get frustrated with something. <clears throat> um, but it really is hard to make that happen. I, and I think that, you know, yeah. I, I can see that you're trying to do that and, and I applaud that. And I think we need to constantly, you know, be rethinking how do we kind of get students comfortable to really create a public forum. So it's a struggle. Right, and I feel like um, there's a lot of, um, readings that I've done where professors have used Facebook to kind of be that forum and be that platform. But a lot of people don't like Facebook. A lot of people only use Facebook to connect with their families. And yes, colleges, like you, if you're a student now and you have Facebook, you can connect 
with many different students, but the face-to-face -face interaction that you're going to have with them will only be in classes, and that's only if you friended the people that are going to be in your class. So I feel like Facebook is another place that, yes, would serve the purpose the same as my app, but it's also used for so many other things that no one would really focus in on that. Yeah, I totally agree with that because we were sort of, you know, talking about the the veterans one last night where some some of the stuff maybe could have could be done in social media already, but I do think this is an instance where existing social media would not function effectively in the same way because you just would not right. be you would not be able to focus even even Facebook groups certainly could fun you know would would in theory serve this way fun same function, but <laughs> you wouldn't stay it like you wouldn't sort of stay in the group just for that you would you would end up bouncing around and checking other feeds and things like that so i think a dedicated app would be really important right. for this kind of thing yeah yeah because there's there's a lot of different designers artists photographers who promote their works on all sorts of social media for you know facebook instagram some people use snapchat i mean suny Polly uses snapchat to try and gain users and um give people news and things like that but getting people to actually follow them is a little difficult because a lot of students don't want to follow their schools in a forever type function they will follow their school social media accounts during their four to six years in the duration of their school time there but more likely than not they'll keep getting posts and keep getting unless they dedicate themselves to their alumni program they will keep getting posts and then they'll just end up deleting it, which is why I think that a, like you said, a dedicated app would really serve its purpose. You know, I think part of this is also getting notified that something's been posted. You know, I get those notifications on my phone now and I always cut them down so I don't get too many. I do get some on my email. Something will come in that says, you know, your other site is, uh, you know, I just posted this question. Do you want to know what the answer is or do you want to get involved? I do think sometimes we need, we, you know, we sort of have these foundation sites that we look at all the time, maybe. Um, it's just coming up on our phone, uh, you know, that says, you know, you've just gotten an Instagram, your daughter just posted something, so that's going to alert me and I'll use it. And I think, you know, I think notifications are one way um, that this is changing things because we are, you know, getting those. Um, and, you know, that's sort of the issue is how, you know, what are we going to listen to? And, you know, we get so much information. Right. I know I knew I was looking through this and I was I knew there was something that I was missing. And now you said notifications. It just kind of dawned on me that I didn't make a home screen that said, like you said, Instagram pops up where feedback would say someone someone gave you feedback or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one thing I should look at. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, it sounds like we've run the gamut, unless anyone else has something. I guess we do have some. Uh, Joe is coming on at 8.30. Well, Shannon, that was great. That was, um, and I, I really like the way that you could pull it together as a, um, as a prototype. That's just, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful Thank you. project. So thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. I can breathe now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.